Welcome to the What's Ever Podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Crowder. I'm here with my co-hosts, Matt Heiner. Better red than dead. And Alec Burgess. Let's get it. We appreciate you tuning in. Go ahead, hit that follow, subscribe, like, bell notification buttons. Um, tell a friend about us. Tell a family member about us. This one's kind of tough. Tell a zombie about us or a fellow zombie survivalist about us. Someone that has a... City for a name. How about that? <laughs> it's, anyway, we appreciate all the followers um, and listeners. Yeah, so before we jump into this week's movie, we got to talk about our sponsor. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to continue to announce that Smooth Sack Summer is still upon <laughs> us. So when you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're groomed from pubes to bum. And thanks to our friends at Manscaped, you can make this season your smoothest yet. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle to keep your boys downstairs cool while looking hot. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer where you can get 20% off plus free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use the verdict, one word, um, and then summertime in the trimming is easy. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good time to stay cool. The fur, as I know, is not pleasant in the summer, um, and it's hot. It's been hot. I, I can't even imagine, Alec. Like you have, I don't know how you have any hair, let alone your long hair. It hasn't been that hot. I mean, today it was a nice, brisk one oh seven. So uh, it was nice, a little, little chilly, almost light sweater weather. Jeez. Get the hell out of here, dude! It was ninety like six today, and I was like, uh. Uh-uh. I let my dogs outside and I wave at them and go, let me know when you're too hot, fuckers. It's, <laughs> I'm not going out there. <laughs> that shit's miserable. Um, but yeah, so trim it. Get rid of it. Buzz it. Do what you got to do. But Manscaped to help you out. So go get 20% off plus free shipping with the code the verdict, All one word at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code the verdict at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind. Um, so jumping hard, in, it's hard to jump- take that seriously. I Gosh. love it. I love it. Smooth sack summer. Um, <sighs> it's July. Welcome to July. And, uh, we have a new category this month. Thanks to our patrons uh, over on Patreon. Go check it out. Uh, what's our verdict there on Patreon and you can be part of the selection process as well. But, uh, we like, this is an interesting topic. I it caught me off guard. I was really excited, but it's 90 minutes or less month. Okay, so every movie we're reviewing this month, all five of them are 90 minutes or less. Um, And the first one that we're doing to kick off July, I think it's a perfect way to start the month, is Zombieland. It was released October 2nd, 2009. It was written by Ruben. Oh, sorry, that was a director. It was written by Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick. It was directed by Ruben Fleischer. Stars Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, Woody Harrelson, Abigail Breslin, Bill Murray, kind of, and Amber Heard, even less. Um, Yeah, it's about a shy student trying to reach his family in Ohio, a gun-toting bruiser in search of the last Twinkie, and a pair of sisters striving to get an amusement park, get to an amusement park, join forces in a trek across a zombie-filled America. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. This movie... Okay, when this movie came out, I was so against seeing it. Like, I was like, I don't want to see this movie. Jesse Eisenberg is hit and miss for me. Like, he's either phenomenal or I hate him. And I don't remember what he had been in right before this, but I hated it. And so I was on this, like, anti-Jesse Eisenberg kick. But I was. it's a tough one because I love Woody Harrelson. I love Emma Stone. And I love Abigail Breslin. But I was like... I just don't think I can see this. It just looks so stupid. But some buddies of mine were like, we're going to see it. You're coming. I don't care. And I laughed my ass off for 90 minutes. Not quite 90 minutes. There's a part in the middle that we can talk about that I wasn't a fan of. But I guess I wasn't a fan of how long they played it. Anyway. Um, yeah. So it, is, it, is, I, it turned out I was pleasantly surprised. 
surprised. surprised. And uh turned out I really enjoyed this movie. But I think it's got one of the better opening 10 minutes of a lot of movies. Like, where it just jumps right in and it gets the rules going. And then you get the practical <laughs> application of the rules mm -hmm. for, like, another 15 minutes. Like, and I love that, like, whole, as it pops up, rule number whatever <laughs> as he's doing it. <laughs> limber up yeah no I, cardio shit's great <laughs> yeah and then it goes back to cardio as he's running a circle in the parking lot yeah i was giggling right out the gate as he's cardio and then he son of a bitch and so he just does a lap <laughs> then it's fucking unlocked the whole time it's great thoroughly enjoy it yeah, no, uh, so I was 16, I think, when this movie came out. So this is, like, one of the first, like, rated R movies I ever saw. Mm -hmm. um, and I die every single time. This this is, like, also one of the first movies that I saw and recognized Woody Harrelson in. Mm -hmm. um, and to be like, oh, oh, this is hilarious. And throughout the entire theme, it's such a stupid comedy, but it's a very relatable comedy. Like if you were to meet someone in the kind of this zombie apocalypse scenario, like I see a lot of these things happening from pulling over to find a hostess truck. truck. That's <laughs> mm. full of fucking snowballs. Oh. Um, you know, it just it just it just makes me giggle. <laughs> yeah, profusely. I love that part too because I completely when he opens it up and all the snowballs fall out. Like I was like, oh fuck that. And then when he's like, I hate coconut. coconut, not the taste, the texture. I'm like, <laughs> me mm. fucking too, bitches. I hate coconut, especially that. Like, I love cooked coconut, like dried coconut, things like that. But I cannot stand that wet ass, slimy, stringy bullshit coconut that mm. they put on fucking sweets. Oh, I hate it. It's the worst. Tell us how you really feel, JJ. Fuck coconut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I resonate with that. I'm not a coconut fan, except in like granola occasionally, and it's really and coconut granola? rice. I will say, who are a little? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just used it from being raised, but like coconut rice is good, but like almond joys and like coconut really on like desserts as a garnish. Ugh. Yeah, it's not, not not good for me. When did I see this movie? I think I saw bits and pieces on TV. A lot like I've definitely seen the Bill Murray that like whole segment in or around it a, a few times for me that's the funniest part of this movie uh, there's obviously some other funny parts I resonate with the Twinkie because I feel like there wouldn't be a lot to live for post apocalyptic but I like food and I feel like I'd have a vendetta to find something as dumb as that and um, and then like Emma Stone when she was back like that was definitely a crush of mine during the, that time period and she was still kind of coming off of some of her most famous movies and this is one of them and um yeah and then haven't watched it this time I think it's the first time I've seen it, like maybe maybe the first second time I've seen it all the way through but because I've seen like all this movie but it was always disjointed I can't think of the last time I watched it from end to end um yeah and. The Bill Murray part's just so funny. Every time it's still so unexpected when he gets capped. Like, I just it was like, oh. And he's down. I don't think we're going to be able to stitch this up. <laughs> think you might pull through? <laughs> Here's the funny part. Like, I like that initial interaction. Like, that sequence of events where he's like, you have any regrets? Garfield, maybe? Like, <laughs> Like, that shit makes me laugh. But the rest of that, like, that gag plays on too fucking long for me. Like, the whole Bill Murray, that's like... And I get they had to do something, because it's still only 90-minute movie with credits. So it's like they had to have something to fill the time. But I was like, oh, that, that part lingers too. I'm like, okay, we've got it. Bill Murray's funny. He's a superstar. I liked it, because I think that some of the other parts of the movie are a little slow for me. Like, I think... But now I haven't watched this movie all the way through. It does suffer, in my opinion, not... I mean, it's not like the greatest story. There isn't like a great overarching narrative. And I think that having watched it again recently, I'm like, this movie's funny, but it could be funny if there was a reason it needed to be funnier. And that's kind of how I left. I was like, ah, oh, like, I feel like that there's a, there a little bit more that it needed. Yeah. 
I would agree with that. I think the reason I like it so much and I forgive the fact that it doesn't really have a plot is that to, to Alex's point, it's very relatable. Like I think about <laughs> this from a perspective of, cause you, most zombie places, you got your badasses and you got your shills, right? Like the people that you trip that, you know, are going to die. And then you got the ones that are just killing hundreds and hundreds of zombies. Like this one for me is so relatable. Like the first thing I'm like, dude, I'm so fucked in a zombie apocalypse. We're there fast. Like if they're just walking around, I'm okay. But if I got to run away from a running zombie, dude, I'm too fat for that shit. Like it's not going to work out well. So the, the fact that it starts with all the fatties went down early, like, <laughs> and then it's like, as you see, it's, you can survive this shit if you don't make dumb ass mistakes, but there are so many stupid ass people in this world that, most of us are going to fucking die whether because we're fat or we're dumb and so like for me like that relatability makes up for the lack of any real storyline because it doesn't yeah. have a storyline like they needed to add these two girls in trying to get to an amusement park to have some level of story or the other story is trying to find a fucking twinkie like it's just yeah it's yeah, there's this no movie story. is a bunch of bit pieces stitched together to have some semblance. But I think you're right. Like when you think about if we were really in a post-apocalyptic setting, like what would we really be? All these movies have some grandiose, like get to this destination, get to this place. And I like how the movie makes fun of itself. Like, oh, if you're in the east, you got to go west. If you're in the west, you got to <laughs> go east and hear these things. And then the ultimate destination when we settle on is a really crappy amusement park. Like, and that's what we're at like that i mean if that's that's to me and why i'm always like if this is really how it is i just would rather die like by believing the afterlife surely it has to be better than this life now i don't know pacific playland looked pretty fucking cool man <laughs> <laughs> oh sure did oh, shit. oh man so funny the, front, the opening part of this movie with the girlfriend part, though, like that's wow. one of the things besides the Bill Murray thing. That's the other part I remember the most is I kept telling Taylor, I was like, I forget exactly when she transforms, but I know she's I was like, I remember she's sick. And I was like, oh, yeah, that it happens. I was like, oh, yeah, like she is messed up. Yeah. yeah. Well, if her name's like 406, her apartment number, because you don't know her name. <laughs> Amber Heard's first role, actually, outside of television, I think. And, uh, like, yeah, the one that gets me, or like the scene that gets me uh, the most, is the like I think it's the initial grocery store scene where they mm -hmm. go in, and it's just why are we stopping here? There's a box <laughs> of Twinkies in that <laughs> store. It might be the last <laughs> box of Twinkies. But he's pulling out like garden shears and a baseball bat and a banjo. <laughs> just <laughs> are we saying JJ would be in a grocery store because those were those were heavier set individuals, and maybe that's maybe that's where you'd be. You got a purdy mouth. Yeah, dude. Come on now. I got to stay fat just because like, like that would be, look, that's a fat guy's worst nightmare. One, the zombies are faster than you can run longer than you because they don't have a stamina issue. And three, like food is gone. Like I can't fucking drive down the road and get some fast food. I got to go find my Twinkies, dude. I would sure as shit. It's the first thing I would do is raid the fucking grocery store slash gas stations. Like I got to stock up that and i'd go find a way to tennessee in the middle of my nowhere land that i own <laughs> like that's, <laughs> that's the other thing i would do but yeah like for sure all the fat guys that's where you're gonna find all the fat zombies <laughs> is, is at the food joints <laughs> Mark. Yep. Alec, are you surviving a zombie apocalypse in terms of this setting because you're more like the main character where you'd like to certainly keep to yourself when you can you are a very calculated and careful individual in some senses and definitely distrust others. So I watched this movie and the first time I watched it and I actually wrote down a list of my own zombie apocalypse <laughs> rules. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it is, but I know it's somewhere in this apartment because I, I took a like one of those little composition notebooks, like, you know, the mini ones. That's mm -hmm. what I put it in. So it's somewhere in my life. I somewhere believe I gotta that. find it. But yeah, I had like a I think I got the hundred something rules. Of my funny. own personal ones uh but i a little bit torn because i i i am gonna survive the initial mm. outbreak because i'm not just not going anywhere like mm -hmm. turn the lights down close the blinds lock the door and i'm 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 good for a couple months 
It's fair. You got enough food After in that, that closet? Yeah, I got enough food in the closet. After that, I'm toast. Yeah. The instant I set foot outside, I'm I'm done for. I'm just going to get bored. Like, if you can't leave your house, and I don't even have enough books anymore because of my Kindle, and I can't turn on the TV, obviously, and I guess... I, until the power would go out, my PlayStation could play the DVDs that we still have, which is uh, enough where like I wouldn't be bored. Like I could rotate through the hundred that I have. But then, like once the power is out, because at some point, and it may go out fast, which that was funny about this movie. I was like, well, everywhere that needs power still has power. That's a little okay. Like w- when when does that not work anymore? Clearly, this universe it does. Like I was, I was a little confusing to me. Uh, it's like the whole amusement park still has power. Like they were there yesterday. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. Like, <laughs> it's not sure how that works. Um, but then I just get bored. Like, what am I doing? Like, so I have a generator with a solar too. panel with a, f- a window that faces the sun. So yeah, you don't have much of an issue. <laughs> you don't have Wi-Fi though. Your problem yeah, is, I, is your... I have DVDs and a DVD player. Yeah. <laughs> The problem is, is your generator is yours one of those super quiet ones. Uh, so it's it's an a uh, technically an electric one that has a sure. solar hookup, so it doesn't actually make any noise. Nice, I gotta get one yeah, of those then. It doesn't zombies. last for a huge amount of time either, but I mean, you only need it for a couple hours before you go recharge it again. It's fair. Well, and I'm with you. Like I got a couple. I don't know, I'm gonna have to go get one of those because I got a couple windows with like pure sunlight all day long. I'll, se- I'll send you the link of what I got. Yeah, I need that. Because I do, uh, generators come in handy. I found that out when I was in Ohio and the power went out, like, for three days in the middle of summer. I yeah, was like, do. fuck that. I will never do that again. So I, ha- I have a gas generator, but that's too noisy for a zombie apocalypse. That's not going to do any good. What's, yeah. human- what's humanity's fascination on the zombie apocalypse? We clearly have identified that as, like, a fascination of the human mind. Why do we feel like that is? I think it's because it's not unrealistic. As much as we want to say it is, and we act like it is, I, and I've told you this, Matt, and I don't think the world ends with a nuclear bomb or any kind of way. I think it ends from a an incurable fucking disease. And if that disease just happens to be zombieism mad cow becomes mad human, becomes mad zombie. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm saying you're gonna basically you're basically saying if somehow they were trying to make like a biological weapon of like rabies and bad cow that somehow mutated it and got out of their control. I mean, I guess maybe we're on that path, but that's yeah. like, we have, I mean, numerous movies of, sure. of this plot line. And it's just, maybe, maybe right. Jay, because we feel like it's close enough to something that could feasibly happen. Yeah. And, and it's, they're terrifying. Like I think about one of, in my opinion, Zack Snyder's only good film, <laughs> uh, the night, the Dawn of the Dead, the one where they're in the mall. Like to me, that one, like that level of fear, because the way I don't know if you've seen it, and spoilers if you guys haven't seen it, but the way it starts with the couple in bed and the little neighbor girl comes over to the house mm. and they're like, "Hey, what's up?" and then she just like fucking killer zombie runs at him and rips the husband's throat out. Like I'm just like. That level of fear and intensity can really, like, there's nothing like a zombie movie. Even if you go back to, like, Night of the Living Dead in the black and white, like, it's still uncomfortably intense because you're trapped. Like, there's so many people in the world that if that actually happened, oh, my God, like, you're in trouble. Like, as much as we want to say we could survive or we got all the rules and shit, but, like, you just walk outside of your house. If, if 80% of people, even not even 90 to, or higher, 80% of people caught this zombie disease, you're fucked. Because there's at least, I mean, what's, I mean, my smaller, smallish town, there's at least close to a million people in here. Uh oh, 800,000 zombies running around. The other 100,000 of a 20, 200,000 of us are fucked. <laughs> Well, so, yeah, the moment the moment you have to you run out of your food reserves or whatever, because yeah, you can have a generator, but the moment you have to step and you gotta go 
whether you got to farm the food or any of that, but you got to go get the supplies and all that, that's when things would go south quickly because you're putting yourself in a scenario where you got your rules, but your rule, your number one rule would be don't leave the house. You're like, well, I got to leave the house. Problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also wonder if it, like going back to your point, Matt, about the fascination is because there's, there's always a chance, right, with the zombie apocalypse nuclear war or something mm -hmm. like that like you're toast but this offers that oh there's a chance there's that oh yeah big chance that i you know i i could survive i could possibly not really but you know there's that <laughs> well you there's could survive a nuclear war if they didn't nuke like jj for instance is living close to Seattle. like he's not let's be honest it's not a target like i'm gone i'm close up to seattle like whether i'm gone or life is really messed up Maybe you're okay in the the, the Phoenix area because again, we pretty much live in radioactive hell. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, like I don't say, know, if I'm like can't get any like, hotter than it is already. At L.A. to Chicago to New York City to some of those bigger cities, like you're, you're clearly you're dead. But those other places, you'd be living in a wasteland, and then it's almost still kind of like zombies because then people are going to turn to their baser instincts, and you're all going to be fighting for survival and. I don't know. I just, whenever I get into those situations, the quality of life that I have now versus what life becomes then, it's like the a Western meets the most fearful version of yourself. And it just is not a very exciting existence because it's obviously, whether it's a zombie apocalypse or uh, a nuclear war, like to get back to where we are today in terms of the living conditions and the technology, you wouldn't see it in your lifetime. That opportunity would be gone. It'd be, it'd be over. And it would, I mentally, yeah, we adapt as humans, but man, it'd be real hard to have this. And then three weeks from now realize I'm just trying to find a way to get my son a meal. And who we dude, like if I could trade that for dying instantaneously and either my religion means nothing and I don't exist, or it did mean something I still exist. It's a lot easier than <laughs> I feel like having the struggle to, figure it out has you haven't forbid it's just me and, and tay and our dog now we have banks like whether it's zombies or other people the moment he's hungry and he's gonna make a peep like i'm rules one through 50 are screwed like i'm <laughs> i'm out like i'm probably dead yeah yeah anybody drops a nuke anywhere in the country i'm going straight north straight north disappearing into the woods of idaho montana wyoming mm -hmm. somewhere up there Nobody's dropping a bomb on. Let me ask you this, JJ. <laughs> if if you were with us and Banks needed a Twinkie to or food to survive, are you gonna be selfish and keep it for yourself? Or are you gonna give the little man some food? No, I'm not an asshole. I'd give it to the child. I got enough to spare. I'm Just a kidding. dick. I'd eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so you, he's little, so he doesn't need the whole fucking Twinkie, but... You <laughs> say that, Alec, true. but I, I feel like you have some feeling in there, too. Well, here's the thing, is I wouldn't even get that far in my thought process. I'd say, Twinkie, ooh, yum, thank you very much, and eat it. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, I'm an asshole. Well, at least I'm yeah. not hungry. <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. Yeah, no, I mean, I. that's my problem, too, is, like, if something like that ever happened, just for the sake of I know how I am, like, I would separate myself as much as possible from humanity because i know i'd end up fucking being too nice to the wrong person you know what i mean like i would just be like oh it sucks oh fuck you just stabbed me in the neck that's great i you know what i mean like i i you know my friends in the zombie apocalypse with two to the chest one to the dome exactly exactly <laughs> that's i'd have to be like okay casey's in charge i'm just gonna we're gonna go north but you get to meet everyone and tell them to fuck off or double tap you know what i mean like because i am too i'm too too sentimental like i'd be like i'm sorry here yeah i don't know that's just why it's i think it's easier to just hopefully all you and yours are all gone and you don't have to worry about it yeah that's the only problem with living in fucking salt lake city though i will say it depends on what they would target too because if they're going after military targets i live next door to one of the largest military bases in the country so yeah. that could mm -hmm. create an issue for me so then i would be toast because literally the blue angels were flying over my house because of the air shows that are going on during the holiday maybe you get maybe. lucky 
Alec will witness the destruction of Las Vegas from yeah. not hundreds of miles away, but Nellis is gone for sure because that's a massive base. And he'll be like, well, it was close, but still here. Yeah, yeah Alec would watch everything. L.A., yeah. fucking Nevada. Yeah. There's a few over here, but I don't think anything big enough to really warrant. No, I, I think you're that. fine. You'd be in the best. You just go down to the res. Nobody's going to mess with the res. They got zombie, uh, you know, <laughs> protocols yeah. in place. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Telling you. Old zombie traditions and everything. I will but, say that this is a very, like, sorry, Alec, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, go say, for it. It's an extremely quotable movie. It is. Like, that shit, the, some of the shit, like when. Bill fucking Murray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we're like, who's Bill Murray? He's like, I've never, I've never a hit a kid. <laughs> mm. That's like asking who Gandhi is. Yeah, yeah. who's Gandhi? <laughs> I fucking love it. Or like when they're searching like his house for no Twinkies. Shit. Fuck. I told you we should have gone to Russell Crowe's house. <laughs> I part when the Twinkies got shot and and oh. uh, like he's making a joke right now. He's like, it's too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's some great. I would just, I, all I'm saying is, I would have probably still, I would have, I would have ate some of that Twinkies still. I would have sure. been like, oh, it's a little mash. It's fine. Twinkie. Yeah. Come on, guys. We're going to put the couch together, build a fort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love, like, Woody Harrelson has some of the best lines in this, too. Like, when he, it's like, I'm not really easy to get along with, and I'm sensing you're kind of a bitch. <laughs> like, it's, or a bit of a bitch. Like, I just, yeah, there's some, it's a very quotable movie for sure. And I remember when we watched it, like when I was younger and when it first came out and uh, you know, I was going to say you were 16. I was like, Jesus, I was like 28 at that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like we used to quote that this movie a lot, a lot, a lot. It's just like one liner after one liner after one liner that they put into a form of a script. Yeah. Well, and I guess that's what kind of what happens when you really have no plot. Like you have to fill it with something entertaining. Yeah. And when you have, I will say, when Jesse Eisenberg is on, he is very good at making jokes because he's so dry, but he's got like these funny facial expressions. <laughs> anyway, like. It's yeah, it's funny. If I was trying to think of the line where he's talking to Emma, where he's talking to Wichita, and he's she says you're kind of cute or something, and he's like, he gets all like, you think so? <laughs> and and uh, she's like, you got the guts of a guppy, yeah, yeah, guppy, guppy. But I'd hit that. <laughs> he's like, really? Like, or at least give you the intentional walk to first. <laughs> it just, yeah, there's so then, many great one-liners. What does Tallahassee say about it? It's like, uh, finally got to first base, a little spit fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, like, something stupid where he's like, you almost knocked over your alcohol with your knife. <laughs> like, it's like, what? <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, like I think that's just like to me the best part of this movie because again, Matt's is not wrong. There's no plot, there's no point, but goddamn, there's some great quotable conversations and lines that are just funny as hell. And then some outrageous shit. Like as much as I get bored with the Bill Murray thing after a while, like it's still at first it's really fucking funny. Like that initial like, oh shit, it's Bill Murray being bill murray and he was trying to play a joke just like you can see bill murray doing that dumb shit too and, oh i'm so, so i shot bill murray <laughs> anyway fun movie. Get shot is so funny uh trivia question oh, yeah. how many what's the expiration date on twinkies or the date sorry how many days before twinkies expire so like 25 years packaged like just the, the manufacturers recommend it. Like you, you buy from the store. It's got the stamp. What is it? And so Alec, no, it's gonna be, no, it's not gonna be that long. So I'd say your sell by day thirty days. Okay, Alec, I'm gonna give you another chance. Twenty four years. 
<laughs> a measly 45 days. Wow. But that's the, I mean, the sell by dates and the expert, like some of those things, obviously like milk, for instance, like real clear to know. But then a lot of, like, I would be the same for probably like a pop tart or any of those things where like some of those things, man, like they're so preservatized. Like who knows? Let's, and that's what they, the whole uh, myth is about Twinkies. Like it's, it, it, it's hard to know. I really think. Well, I've seen Twinkies that have been left out and they don't even like grow mold or anything. Those fuckers just look like a Twinkie. They just turn, they like calcified. Like that's it. Like they, <laughs> they become like uh, fossils. They fossilize. Jay, Jay, is that why America's fat? Twinkies? Or oh, we got, we got a lot of, we got a lot of the preservatives that don't make food ex- ex- <laughs> and we're ingesting that and. No, what that's that why we all have fucking cancer. Well, the reason America's <laughs> fat is because we, it, our portions, like you go to other countries, their portions are normal. And I say normal, meaning a normal human being would eat it and go, that was good. I'm comfortable. We go and they bring us all you can eat shit or they bring us a bowl, a plate the size of my fucking head. Like the Cheesecake Factory? I mean, yeah, like this is pasta for three. Yeah, like if you bring someone from a- another country into our country and they go to a restaurant, they're like the portion sizes are stupid. That's why we're fat because we eat way too fucking much and we eat shit. Like we have fast food on every other fucking corner. Don't eat, which... don't eat next day pasta from the cheesecake factory because then you really realize when the the oil separates from the sauce, then you're like, well, maybe that's yeah. why I went to the bathroom tonight because I just ingested like a quarter pound of oil in my system. Yeah. I try not to think about what I eat at restaurants. because, Well, that's the only time I really am like, Ooh, yeah, not, not great right there. Wasn't, wasn't my best choice. Maybe that's why I felt a little sluggish. Yeah. That's Casey. And I actually, not that this has anything to do with zombie apocalypse, but kind of does. Cause we, Casey and I have started cause I'm fat and I need to lose weight. So we've bought like a shit ton of these easy recipe cookbooks, like less than an hour to make mm-hmm. period. Most of them are 30 minutes or so. And even my dumb ass can cook them. Um, but they're like, we use, like we're being smart about what we buy too. Like we don't just go buy fucking process shit so that we can cook it. Still process shit when we cook it. So we are actually trying to be very thoughtful of like, what we buy to use the, in these recipes because it's terrible. The shit that like, if you go out to eat, like even if you go to like a, one of these healthy fucking places, these no, they're still eating it. Cause they all get their shit from the, unless you go to a farm to table restaurant, which is way expensive. Mm-hmm. You're still getting the fucking, um, the big food trucks that drive up to their restaurant in the back and unload a bunch of frozen or packaged or processed shit. Like it's, I don't care how much they say it's healthy. It's still just coming from the same fucking food package or place. Unless you're farm to table, unless you're at a little tiny restaurant that goes out to the farmer's market every day and buys fresh produce and meats and goes to the butcher. Cause that's the other thing we're doing. We're going to an actual butcher to get our meat, like as opposed to buying it packaged in the store. So anyway, there's my fucking rant of the day of what we're trying to do to be healthier because you brought it and i it's so i can survive a po- fucking zombie yeah. apocalypse first to go are the fatties i got <laughs> yeah, i can't fucking be fat anymore <laughs> all right jj N- next time you and i say we need to go get a snack i'm gonna say drink your water and you can eat popcorn or something i'm gonna, I hold, like you, it. I'm gonna hold you to it i like hold, it hold me to it because late night gaming snacks never a good thing for the body no it's terrible and it's even worse because i'm usually <laughs> Yeah, you're usually high and you're munching too much. (laughs) So I get the munchies. I'm like, fuck, I need food. Yeah, what did Casey say about that? Because that's a contributing factor for sure. So we've bought, like, we're working on some snacks, like dried fruits, things like that. That I'm like, this tastes yummy and I'm high, so it tastes even better. I (laughs) Actually, what I've tried to do, it's funny you mention that because now my snack, when I say I'm getting snacks, I'm trying to eat dried mangoes. Yeah. it's Yep. We have a lot of that. That's what we've started doing. And what for our listeners, cross. if you were wondering what podcast you're listening to right now, this is still <laughs> this is still what's our verdict. 
But with a movie this short and a movie that doesn't really have plot, and we've already exhausted the quotable lines and talked about the funniness, had to fill the time somehow. So hopefully, yeah. hey, if you feel like you need to eat a little healthier, let, let us be your guide. Yeah. Do you have a dehydrator, JJ, or do you buy them dehydrated? Um, we buy them dehydrated for now. We have a little a store that has a really nice dehydrated. They dehydrate fruit and put it, sell it at their own. It's not like prepackaged shit. Um, it's, a lot, it's a lot of work, Alec. But we are, we're buying one. Oh, sweet. Yeah. We're, so Casey's sister had, Casey had one. We gave it to her sister because we never used it. And so. But, but JJ, you can send one. me some dehydrated homemade jerky. I will gladly take a shipment from you. Well, that's the other thing that we were, so I've got, I got a smoker. So I'm going to smoke some meats and then dehydrate it and make jerky. You can do it just on the Traeger, but just, no, we're not sponsored fuckers, but I have a Traeger. So you can do it and just That's make jerky on your Traeger. But it's really good if you just if you smoke it real good, dry it out a little bit, and then you stick it in the dehydrator. Oh, yeah. I still think that's the better route because I don't think you could get it to quite the consistency needed on the Traeger. No, it's a little chewy coming off the Traeger. Yeah. It's a little soft, but it's like kind of like bacon. Anyway, it's – but, yeah, I have well, – figure it out. That's we're trying to be better about it, be more proactive at so that I can escape the zombies when I work on Alec, let's send JJ heads of broccoli. I'd eat them. You don't I want like broccoli. I love broccoli. <laughs> Two Russian <green>. broccoli is good. <laughs> I like broccoli. All right, let's rate this some bitch. Whose movie was this? This was me. Hey, I only got one movie in this, and it's the very last one. So I'm going to go four. Four out of five for zombie apocalypse or zombie land. I. I feel like it's not a zombie apocalypse movie, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you want a zombie apocalypse movie, there's better movies out there. If you want better comedy, there's better movies out there. But this kind of meets the middle with a low runtime, and it's just, it's it's good fun. Like, you don't have to really pay attention to what's going on, and you it, it's not a waste of your time, right? It's not an investment to go ahead and sit down and watch this thing from start to finish. Um, four from me. I'll watch it again, but it's not something that I ever really like. Hey, I really want to watch Zombie Land. It's never a must kind of go to, but yeah, yeah, I'll watch it again, hundred percent. I'll go. I've been thinking about this. Uh, I've been waffling between a three and the three and a half. Uh, I'll go three and a half. I mean, I think this movie's made up of scenes, as I talk about. So it's a great movie if you're doing some chores, you're walking around, you're in and out on the television, and then the Bill Murray scene pops up, or you'll watch the beginning opening scenes of this movie, and you'll laugh when you think about the Twinkie, and you'll be like, man, when's the last time I had a Twinkie? And you'll be like, I don't even know when I have, but I hate those snowballs, because who likes those? Stuff like that. Those things will happen, and then you'll be like, man, maybe, how would I do in a zombie apocalypse in real life? Like, should I actually watch a real zombie movie? Those thoughts is what went into my head. And so it, it makes you laugh, doesn't take itself seriously. But is it really a good movie? There's certainly some good lines, some good actors in it. But this movie, in my opinion, having watched it all the way through for the first time in a while, it does suffer from it not having some direction in the way that I think it could help drive it a little bit more home. And that's why I've docked it quite a bit, because I just think it could be better crafted in terms of a story and a little bit of character progression that I care about. But it's funny, doesn't take itself seriously. It's an easy watch and it is enjoyable. I'm sure I'll find it again on TV or something and I'll laugh and watch a little bit of it again. Um, but it's not something I like I will seek out. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four as well. And I think for me, there's a couple of reasons. One, it's not I'm usually one bitching if it's got a shitty story. Like if there's if there's no point to it, I will usually bitch, but this movie makes me laugh and i think it, especially at the time it was very brave to put out a movie like this to, to alex point that isn't the best zombie movie isn't the funniest comedy but together somehow it worked to make me laugh and entertain me and they kept it short and sweet um i think it could have been a little shorter because you could have cut the bill murray's house shit down by 10 minutes but that's just me but i think that for me like i'm i'm giving it a lot of credit more credit than I give a lot of movies because of the fact that it was so outside the box and so different that it surprised me. And I still, to this day will laugh going along with both of you. Like it's not a movie that I go, Oh, I got to go watch Zombieland. 
However, if I'm like, fuck, I don't know what to watch and I'm flipping through, you know, Amazon Prime or I'm flipping through Netflix and Zombieland pops up, I'm like, oh, you know what? I can watch Zombieland. That shit's funny. It's, I, it's, I don't have to think about anything. I just sit and listen to Gibgo and I can get up and get a healthy snack and not worry about missing something. So, yeah, I'm going to give it a four. I really enjoy it. I liked it. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. So, there it is. Wow, guys. The first 90 minute or less is in the books. Ayo. It's a good topic. I like it. Thanks, Charles, for this topic. It's kind of fun. We almost spent half the time that this movie was on screen talking about it. Well, yeah. probably like if you really, someone does some microanalysis here, we probably talked to us about this movie for like 14 minutes and then talked about <laughs> a bunch of other yeah. stuff. <laughs> We have to get like one of the Patreon guys to like as they watch the episode, start keeping track of how much time we actually spent talking about the movie. It's not a lot, <laughs> but good not. conversation is good conversation. Yeah, exactly. We're here to entertain, not necessarily tell you what movies to watch. That seems counterintuitive, but whatever. Alec, tell everybody where they can find us when they're not listening us to a rant and rave. Happy to. In keeping with the theme of short movies, we're going to keep short outros too. So if you guys want to join in on picking us topics and then voting on movies, Patreon is the place to do so. Special thanks to our current patrons. I don't know their names, JJ. I haven't looked since they updated them. So get those to me while I talk more about where we can be found, which is YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts currently. Uh, we also had a very nice uh, review online mm. that we never talked about the podcast review i've got it right here so special thanks to uh bonita 333 who put y'all are so funny i assume she means me and jj not mattson and you work well together uh, she must not be watching the right podcast uh you make movies mm. fun and when i wouldn't otherwise care on another note phantom of the opera is a true creeper so we were speaking the same language mm -hmm. there thank you bonita 333 for that uh so jj who are our patrons i know they're changing names all the time well uh, so we only had one name change so we're still talking to mel brooks mel brooks richard richard and the moon landing was real <laughs> Right, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> so special thanks to Mel Brooks, Richard, and the moon landing was real. It wasn't uh, for <laughs> this pick. And with that, I'll kick it back to the great Bambino, JJ. Yeah, actually, I had a call out that I got to do here real quick. Ooh. Um, I we were I was checking, and I don't look. I don't. I'm terrible at social media, so she had popped up on Facebook, and I'm trying to pull it up here, and it. Matson will know this name when I read it, but she had hit us up. She used to listen to us when we first came out because we were all friends. We worked together, so they used to listen to us. And then she's like, "I," she messaged and said, "I haven't been listening to you." She's had a lot going on, and so, but she's like, "It was so fun to listen to you again." I'm trying to pull. God, why can't is it Katie? No, Sam. I, no, it would be fun to hear from Sam, though. Oh, there's message. I was trying to find one. This is how much I don't use it. So, Brittany. Oh, yeah. It was, it was probably one of those. Oh, what's yeah. up, Britt? She said, uh, she said, I enjoyed y'all's take on Phantom of the Opera. I saw it on Broadway in New York, and he's creepy AF for sure. So that could have been her that left a review, too. But uh said, I got away from listening to you guys, but I'm back and reminded why I like y'all. You guys are so much fun. Miss all working together. So. Thanks, Brittany, for listening. Likewise, nice special again. special tab from my heart to yours. See, Charles, like these are things like something. You know what? For our <laughs> listeners out there, when I I don't know if you all hear me gripe as much because you're on the Patreon. If you want to, it's fun. Charles requested Toy Story two, so right now we're in a love fest right now, and I'm worried when <laughs> when when we're gonna break up. But Charles, right now, like I was gonna say something bad, and then I remembered you really touched my heart with that pick. So nothing but love right now. Yeah, as I say, you better you better hang on to the love. Though I will say, <laughs> he did have a comment. There, we'll talk offline, but he was like talking about. Uh, he had a comment on one of our. Again, we put we post put behind the scenes content on Patreon, so just one more reason to go check it out. And we I had posted some of us talking after we recorded Beetlejuice, and he says Q three pick. All of you have to see the Beetlejuice play. <laughs> And I was like, I didn't even know there was a Beetlejuice play, but let's fucking do it. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, apparently there's a Beetlejuice play. 
see Matson, you just never like if you're gonna be a Patreon, be nice to what you make us watch. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, there it is. July's been kicked off. Looking forward to the rest of the month. Um, and with that, as always, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. What? Hasta la vista, baby. Cinematic out. Whoa!